Sue Murphy is here with us for our new weekly slot about what to watch on telly. What are we watching, Sue? Um, everything, anything that's going, but um, the main thing is I came across Back to Life on Netflix. Do you know the way the suggestions come up in Netflix and you're like, oh, God, no. Um, and this, they kind of bombard you when you go in. There's just too much information. But Back to Life was one of the ones that came up for me. And it's like the trailer just totally pulled me in straight away. And I was like, no, I'll definitely give this a go. And it's just... It kind of reminded me of Fleabag in some ways. I don't know if you guys have seen that yet, because if you haven't, it's phenomenal. You should definitely watch it. But it's kind of that kind of humor, kind comic grief, kind of very just dark in places, but really endearing in loads of other places. Like it just hits you in the stomach with emotions sometimes that you're not expecting. Basically, it revolves around this girl called Mary who returns to her life after 18 years in prison. You're not quite sure what she did to end up in prison, but... Um, when she comes back, most of the town, the coastal town where she lives, hates her. Like there's uh, bricks thrown in the windows of places she works. There's graffiti on the outside of, of the her parents' home that they're constantly trying to scrub away. And she's just like, her whole life is gone and she's just basically trying to just move on and nobody's letting her. And it's fo really funny in places and just really, really sad in places. And I've gotten through about three episodes. Like I, I watched it to review it for News Talk, and I just couldn't stop watching it. It's really, really, really good. OK, so it's called Back to Life. Back to Life. Uh, and it's one season? Is it a... Is it... It's one season, yeah. And it's a BBC like, show. It was uh, 2019. I remember when this first came out, it kind of... Like, I saw the press release for it, didn't really watch it. And then, it, just because it was on Netflix, I picked it up. But it doesn't seem there doesn't seem to be a second series on the way or anything like that, which is really disappointing. I don't know. I don't know what happens in the last episode. Maybe it is a self-contained thing because I haven't got to the last episode yet. But sometimes it, when there's no second season, that's the best thing for everybody. So you know you're watching this and it's a one-time commitment and you're not going to have yeah. to come back to it. And you don't. You know, I, I actually kind of sometimes prefer that. Yeah, but, like but, it's like the Queen's Gambit. So much better as one contained series. Didn't need to be any more. You know. They've got a number two on IMDb. Just saying. They, they've opened up the tab for season two on IMDb. Is this is this a sign? Is this is this a sign that we're not going to get a terrible, terrible ending to season one? I I hope so. I well, I, I don't want to give anything away, but I got to the end of the second episode and it wasn't what I thought it was. If that makes sense. So like it it it, it there is a kind of a, a reveal halfway through it, and I don't want to actually give that away. But it's just things that are buried in Netflix that are absolute gems that people are only really starting to come across now. And like, if you give it the time, it's actually totally worth it. Like the other one, actually me and Owen were talking about this yesterday, Shit's Creek. And um, this is like, okay, it's not a buried gem anymore. But I remember when I first started watching this, um, I, I was on maternity leave and it was just 20 minute episodes. So it was fine for me to watch because I didn't have that much time. And I had a child hanging out of me all the time, but it was, just what i needed and uh, like i don't know about you guys but when you watch the news at night and it's just all so grim at the moment and you just want like i just need 20 minutes of something it's perfect perfect escapist tv and have you guys seen it yet yeah i'm like i don't know i don't know how many seasons through um yeah. what has just happened uh, they've got the store and they've had the store a couple of they've had the store oh, for yeah, a while yeah. they've had the yeah. the, the uh, kids stealing in the store and um <laughs> Lexus yeah <laughs> but that, this is my second time watching it and I never like never watch anything a second time around and I just I just was like I need to go back to Shits Creek and just start watching it again so this is my second time watching it in a year like it's that good it's that, that's a remarkably close amount of time between a rewatch, Sue. Like, is, do you yeah. not feel that like your your television watching time could be spent on better things, like actually broadening <laughs> your horizons than doubling down on Shit's Creek? No, <laughs> not at the moment. Like, I just kind of feel like whenever I walk into my sitting room, Gary Neville's on the TV, and like everyone just needs a break from Gary Neville every now and again. Like, it's just at the moment, I think Escape is TV. Like the other one that I watched over Christmas was Bridgerton, um, and it was just one of those ones that. Like any time I had twenty minutes, I was just watching Bridgerton. No thanks. And I think I think no. No thanks. Really? No thanks. <laughs> okay. No thanks to people dressing up as uh, rich English people from two hundred years ago. No thanks. But it's Why? surprisingly uh, good. Ah, <laughs> so, uh, spare me, spare me. Oh, we we found the next darts here. So what? So all <laughs> all period dramas, period comedies, whatever no, it is, no, it's no, not for you. No, not not all, not all, but just uh, that. Refined English manners, rich people, nah, not having it, not having a pal, no thanks. Yeah, but did what you watch Downton? Definitely did not watch Downton, won't be watching oh. Downton. 
Like, Come on. probably not going to watch The Queen or whatever it's called either. Like, I mean, I realize that it's kind of a bit more up to date. Right. Might skip the early parts, but like, nah, no. I just. The Crown. Like, the Crown, whatever. Yeah. You no haven't interest. watched The Crown? No. And like, <laughs> but why? I mean, why, why should I be that interested in the royal family of England? Like, yeah, that's what a shit show that crown. is. No thanks. <laughs> that, that, that's just such a one-dimensional way of looking at television exactly. in general. There's so it's much like, better it, stuff it, out there. There's so much what, better what stuff. Ca- the, the crown the serves crown. a great purpose in telling us uh, things about society, not about the royal family. You know, of course, it tells us lovely, salacious details about the royal family, and it's hammed up, and it's all great, especially if you don't really like the royal family. It's brilliant. But it also uh, tells us things about different elements of society. You're looking at this in... Well, I, have in, an, in I, have a, I have a more open mind about the, uh, the crown than I do about Downton or any of that stuff. I mean, I, I would much rather read the original... Like, I'm happy to read some Jane Austen. It, that's uh, top-quality stuff, but, like... Even the TV representations of all that stuff is like, no. You're beginning to sound like a bit of a snob, Ger. It's the opposite <laughs> No, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take my Jane Austen and the real historical accounts, but well, I won't watch any entertainment TV. It's the, I mean, <laughs> well, I think there's plenty of entertaining TV. I just think that, like, uh, not choosing to escape into the uh, imperial wealth of the British Empire is something that I'm choosing to do. I'm, I'm like, I'm OK. I've had enough of the British Empire in my <laughs> life. Thanks very much. But it's a, like I, like Owen was saying, it's a lot more than that. And I think with The Crown as well, it's just be, like, it's a masterclass in TV making. It's beautifully shot. The casting is superb. Everything and is beautifully shot is these brilliant. days, though, too. Like that, that like no. in the 80s, that was like, okay, grand, because there was lots of crap that we had to sift through. A lot of it at that stage would have been yeah. like made by the BBC. And even then, that was like the best stuff in the world. But most stuff you see nowadays is actually very well shot. I expect my TV, given how much money is going into it, <laughs> And how many different subscriptions you have to be reasonably well made and proficient, like to but be that's not to, to have the a case. basic standard. But that's not all, look. Think about it this way, right? I love the way this became an argument about the crown. Like I know people that are absolutely kind of like you would hate the idea of being a royalist or a monarchy and anything, and will watch the crown because it is so intriguing and brilliant. I said I've had a like, relatively open mind about the crown, but I, I'm not doing Downton. I'm not Bridget. You just sense. said a minute ago you'd never watch it. Yeah, so I said <laughs> I've had an open mind about watching it. Like I might be convinced. I might be convinced at some point into uh, into watching it, but like I'm not in any rush. Okay, well this is the slot. It's just you watching the crown for the next few weeks and us talking about it. Oh, hundred percent. <laughs> and you get a running commentary from start to finish of you b- binging yeah. the crown. That, that that is what this slot is going to become, whether you like it or not. <laughs> well, I might just have to phone in sick every Thursday morning at twenty past nine. Uh, what what are you watching, Owen? Uh, well, so me, me and Sue had this conversation yesterday and we came to the conclusion that actually being somebody who watches a lot of Premier League is way harder than being a parent. Uh, so uh, Sue obviously is uh, doing a bit of both and she definitely agreed that watching Burnley all the time or watching Aston Villa all the time is way more of a burden on your time. So doing a lot of that at the moment, like I could tell you exactly how Ashley Westwood takes his corners for Burnley. Couldn't tell you a lot about any new television shows. Uh, I started The Sopranos uh, two months ago and I'm still at it. That, that is how bad my binging has been. I'm doing it. I'm tic-tacking a little bit with Curb Your Enthusiasm. So uh, do, doing the, the Now TV double at the moment, uh, Soprano season five, midway through it, first watch. I've, I think it was my third, fourth attempt to actually start it. I've actually uh, kept my end of the bargain up this time and you I've gone all with the it. way. And, why, and did you, why did you drop out in the past and what, what changed this time? Maturity, fair That's enough. Okay, I get it. You're a bit older and a bit wiser. It's fair enough, Owen. It happens to all of us. The bad, lang- the bad language put me off in the past, yeah. That, that was it. The violence, God, I was, I was offended and horrified by everything that I saw. So I was like, maybe, maybe I'll wait till I'm uh, 26 and a half to actually watch this thing. And what that's did, what I did. And what, did, what did actually, what was different this time? Lockdown, actually having time to spend with it and being like, I'm really looking forward to putting aside 52 minutes of my time to actually watch this. And maybe I'll do another 52 minutes right afterwards. Because I do think it, the glory in this show is the depth that it goes to in terms of every single character and uh, little ticks that you start to notice from all the different characters that are presented towards you rather than going in and out of it once every every week, for example, and being like, what was happening in the last episode? Who's this guy? What's his name? I think actually gorging on it, even though it's taken me two months to get this far, I think gorging on it is the best way to consume this show because I didn't quite realise that it is such a character-led show rather than a narrative led show until I actually fully watched it and realized that's what it's all about. Uh, like I'm, I'm almost finished season five. It's basically two seasons left because season six is basically a double season as, as far as I'm aware. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing how it goes, but it just gets better and better and better. What's... Even though it's not objectively getting better, you 
you're just falling more in love with everything that's happening in this universe. It's funny, it's, uh, I actually have had that very thought, whether or not the later seasons are actually better than the early seasons, but that's not the case. When you go back and listen to, um, so I'm listening to that documentary, or not documentary, the podcast series at the moment that uh, two of the actors are doing, and um, you can't listen to it yet on because they give away so much, but when you're I finished, know. you can go back. Um, and like they're talking about the later seasons, and you're like, wow, they really reached a, a peak of storytelling and depth and character. But actually, some of the stuff that happens in season two is some of the best TV that's ever been made. That whole yeah. big pussy storyline is unbelievable. Like, yeah. and how that's all slowly unfolding, and uh, and the the nightmares that 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 brings, literally and, and metaphorically, to um, to Tony and to the crew. That's sensational TV. And I actually wouldn't speed up if I was you. I would slow that out, like, you know, the last few meals of a, a person in the desert desperately waiting to get to the oasis because you'll never watch this again for the first time. Yeah. Like, yeah. Can I say one thing? If I have to tell you my Soprano story. I am obsessed with The Sopranos, and I was watching it as it was on TV years ago, and I've never seen the last episode because I recorded it, and the next day I was listening to the radio, and a broadcaster gave away the end, the very last scene of the very last episode. And I was like, well, not going to watch that now. And I was so annoyed. I've never gone back and watched the last episode. Well, that's a bit silly, too. <laughs> <laughs> Name and shame. I Who was the broadcaster? So imagine um, Ray Foley. He was talking about it the next day, and then he just went, well, i got to tell everything that happens, and then told everyone what happened. And really? I blame, actually, J.P. Gilborn because he was involved. Did, so. it, did, did they actually <laughs> tell you the truth about what happened? Because I, I was on air that morning and uh, made up an ending and got a lot of trouble for making up the ending, <laughs> which is as ridiculous a made-up ending as I could possibly do, because I hadn't been watching it. Uh, yeah. And the, I took a lot of... Uh, for, I was like, duh, if you'd actually been watching it, which you clearly have, because you're giving out about it, it couldn't possibly have been the ending. Um, yeah, well, like I think that the problem was you spent, so, and like you were saying, you spend so much time with these characters and you really get to know them. And then with the last episode, I was like, couldn't bring myself to watch. I've never sat down and watched the last episode since. And I, like, I know what happens, obviously, but I just, I can't do it. I'm gonna have to go back to the start and start again. And but isn't there, isn't out. there like a, a major death scene early on in the final episode? I don't know. I think there might be. <laughs> like, I think there might Pretty be young. a massive plot twist or important point in like. There's not, it's not just the end, it's not just the last scene. You've got to watch okay. that last episode. And sorry, the, um, you've never watched that back? No. The whole thing? I've never, uh, no, I've never watched back The Sopranos since, no. Right, well that's, uh, <laughs> I've, I've watched The Sopranos three times, and I'd much rather watch The Sopranos again than go and watch Downton or Bridgerton or any of that. Uh, yeah, but like, that's the kind of stuff that you need to just turn your brain off. Like, The Sopranos, like, I, there's a different tier of TV where you're like, I have to commit to this and it deserves my time. Whereas Bridgeton, you could probably pick up your phone in the middle of it and then go back to it. It's fine. You're not going to miss a plot point. What's the point of that? But sure, it's escapist TV. <laughs> no, that's what Shit's Creek is for. Watching, no, you're not just watching TV just to like be really serious TV. You need not to have something to, that you can be like... Which The Sopranos is hilarious. The Sopranos is absolutely hilarious. hilarious. But like it's, it's, that's... Yeah, but the really serious yeah, storylines. Like, I remember the first time I watched The Sopranos, I remember watching him going into the, the to meet a psychiatrist, and I was like, "This is unbelievable! This is a mafia boss going into see." And th that demand, like, it demands your attention from the outset. Whereas, like, those kind of fluffy things that are really nice to watch over Christmas don't demand the same attention. Different tier of TV. Um, the marvelous Mrs. Maisel is sensational. It's on Amazon. Uh, there's three seasons of it. We watched it over Christmas, and um, it's like really good. Uh, the morning show on Apple. Oh, yeah. uh, parts of it are awful. With that. Parts of it are absolutely awful, and then parts of it are like stunning. So it has the you've got to kind of swallow a little bit of cheese to get the good stuff. Um, but there's one scene um, where Jennifer Aniston is talking to her daughter, and it's like, wow, this is pretty good. This is good stuff. Uh, a lot of parents are like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but that, that's what, I mean, that's ten, 10 episodes. And I think they are making a second series, but you don't want a second series, something like that. It's like, fine. Yeah. You've done this. It's great. Uh, off you go. That Hugh Grant, Nicole Kidman thing, when you're watching yeah. Nicole Kidman these days, what, 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 what does she feel? Is she happy? Is she sad? Is she smiling? <laughs> Is she laughing? Is she distressed? I can't tell. That's terrible. That's I can't terrible. tell. I, I didn't like the end of that. I really didn't the like the last fine. episode. The end was fine. Your man gets arrested. Who cares? Like, yeah, the well, end's kind the of, end of it. The end's For kind of... that hasn't seen it. The end's kind of irrelevant. <laughs> like, uh, it's the, the, the journey... I mean, you know, but they had invested too much in that. And um, I, it didn't make any sense. 
It really didn't make any sense. I thought it was like... Yeah, well, I thought Nicole Kidman was brilliant in it because I usually don't what like did, Nicole What was Kidman. she doing? Who was she? I, she's always the same character. Well, I, I would... She's always got the same accent, the same hair, the same... Vo everything is the same about and Nicole Kidman and everything. Unfortunately, I can't tell what she is emoting at any point. <laughs> the, the, Poor Nicole the ma Kidman. The mask never <laughs> slips. <laughs> We should uh, uh, recap what uh, the suggestions have been this morning. So we've got uh, Back to Life, we've got Schitt's Creek, we've got The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, and we've got The Morning Show. I think they're four rock solid suggestions. I should mention before, <laughs> uh, like, pe people are saying 2021 is going to be a bad year. I don't know how anybody can say that when the US office is back on Netflix. Every single episode, watch it, rewatch it, watch it for a third time, watch it for a fourth time. That is the only thing you should be doing this year. It will make your life ten times happier. There's nothing really coming up for 2021 that's a problem. Like the, the one series that I saw coming up on ITV was Finding Alice and they took two years to film it because of COVID. Like it's going to be a bad year for new TV. Yeah, really it's, it's going to be about 18 months or so. But some stuff mm -hmm. is back filming. Um, uh, they, Blue Bloods is obviously back filming and I'm not a fan. I've never watched it. But if they're able to do that, they should be able to do some other stuff too. So I don't think it's going to be as big. A disaster as people are saying um wolf walkers if you haven't seen it is absolutely sensational uh it's uh, perfect for kids and grown-ups alike that's also on apple tv at the moment it's 9 40 this morning